Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. We are on the time zone. So you all are coming from. So before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. So my name is Neil Shadia, and I've been into the Saudi domain for the last 14 years as a solutions architect, where I have been designing the enterprise solutions for different industry verticals across the global market. Uh, since the last five years, I've been into this trade domain as well. So here we are going to discuss on AWS DevOps, where we'll be talking about how DevOps can be implemented by using the core services offered by AWS. Thanks for coming so much. So here we'll be discussing on the DevOps and the lifecycle basis of it, and how about a CI CD pipeline. And then we'll be discussing on the DevOps components and building a CI CD pipeline on AWS. All right. So first of all, why DevOps? So DevOps all the mid to large scale applications need to make sure that they are able to accommodate all the challenges of the previous SDLC model. Like previously we had the waterfall model, which was good for small scale applications where changes were not required much. But again, with the introduction to multiple because of treatment releases and the changes which have to be pushed to the end client on a continuous basis, the so waterfall model simply failed in that scenario. And then it came up, then the industry came up with the agile model, which solves some issues with the waterfall in terms of designing and building and testing phase being iterated. But again, still the deployment was done as a complete main lifecycle only. Now, next we have multiple limitations of agile model as well. So again, which we have to make sure that we do remove because again, until as we are going to remove the limitations, we will not be able to have a frequent release life cycle achieved that we are looking for. So therefore setting up these, we do need to have the life cycle set up defined. Next, that's where we come up with DevOps. So DevOps is basically a continuation or case a combination of eight core phases, which starts with the planning phase. Then we have the coding planning phase involves planning the entire application layout, which includes planning the Git counter, planning the entire application workflow, what all platforms will be needed, how the entire timeline is going to be distributed, and for planning the use tools that we have, Jira, Planio, Prelio, and those components. And then we are going to need the setup in terms of the Jira-based platform, in terms of the planning. And then after that, we are going to move to coding phase where we do need to have a continuous version control that we have Git through which we can track the changes that we have been doing whenever required. If you want to revert to previous changes, then we would be able to do that. Then we move on to the building phase where we use tools that we have Maven, Grid, Gradle to ensure that we are having a continuous build setup. So that in case whenever we want to you know, whenever the application is ready, we can create a build out of it and then we can push it to the staging servers here. And then we define the testing tools like we have Gradle, Selenium. So we use tools, not Gradle, Selenium, Appium, QA unit, SG unit. So we use these tools to make sure that we are having a complete clarity on, we are able to test the applications so that we can create a testing script and then we can apply those testing scripts to the application code which has been built successfully. And then we move it to the deployment platforms like we have Docker, we have Bargain, where we define how exactly they are going to be used for creating a container-based deployment. And then for the orchestration of those services, we go in and define tools like we have Share, we have Ansible, we have Kubernetes to manage the entire deployment. And then we go in and make use of tools like we have Nagios, Plum to ensure that we are able to set up a monitoring service as per the requirement, so that we can apply all the modern components as per the setup. So next we have the DevOps components where we can define the code commit, which is going to be the same tool just like we have did. Up. So we can allow the developers to continuously push their code that can be saved in this code, in this code commit repository. Then we have code pipeline, which is similar to Jenkins, where we can use it to create a pipeline for automating the entire process of fetching the code from the repository and then creating a deployment out of it. And then we have the code deploy, which is basically a deployment platform where we can use tools that we have Beanstalk or we can deploy it on top of PC instances. 
and so on. So these all these are going to be defined there. And then code star is basically tool that we use for review of the code, whatever we have created. Now, first thing first, we are going to discuss on code command, which is the same tool as the pipeline, as the GitHub. So let's see how exactly we can work on code command. So for that, we are going to navigate to our console. So here we have got into the console. So here we are going to navigate. Now the best way to navigate to any service in AWS is to use a search bar available on top. So if you want to work with code commit, so we can search for code commit as a service that we can switch to. Now, if you want, we can start with the demo repository. So here we can do one thing. Right now, our goal is to look at how exactly we can create a repository here and how we can restrict the users from from any other users to push the code into the main repository. So we'll be discussing on how we can create repositories here and how we can restrict the access to developers to push the code in the main repository. So being a developer, they will be able to be allowed to push the code only in the main repository, not in any other repositories here. So here we can click on this option which says create repository. We can define the repository name. So let's say here we can define repository name as demo repo. Just like in GitHub, we create a repository. So same way we can create repositories in our code commit account. So we can define the repository that we want to work with. And we have the code guru. So basically when we are going to work with code guru, code guru is like a service that we can define that is going to review the code submitted which are going to be on based on Python and based on the Java. So again, it is going to review the codes submitted in these two languages. And in case any errors are going to be there, then that is going to be highlighted and shared back. That's how it is going to be. All right. So here we can go ahead and click on create. Once we have the repository created, then we can see here we have the HTTPS as in if we can clone the URL, we can clone the repository from anywhere like clone HTTPS and then same way like in GitHub, we can keep on adding the files directly. Same way we can keep on adding the files here in code commit. So for example, if you open up any repository in GitHub, we can see the files available and then we can go ahead and upload the files directly, right? So let's say we want to create a file directly here. So we can click on add file. We can click on create file. Let's say here we want to upload a simple basic HTML script here, for example, Let's see here we can save it by the name of index.html. So here we can define HTML, the head section, the title, which is going to be, let's say, quote commit. We can close title, close head. We can define body as h1, as in welcome to quote commit example suppose this is a simple code file that we want to create here we can copy and paste entire code we can push the application code to the main environment we can go ahead and do that and then we can go ahead and define the file name let's say we can call the file name as index.html and we can define the author who has created this particular file and then we can add a commit message. For example, here we have first commit of home page. For example, click on commit changes. So again, this is going to allow us to commit. That means save all the changes in this repository. Now, uh, once we are done with this, next we are going to now here we can see that everything is being done in the main branch. Now we don't want we don't if we have a team or suppose 10 developers, so we don't want those 10 developers to have the access to the main branch because again if they are able to push their code in a main branch then that is going to simply hamper the main application because let's say if there's any any issue with the main code then that is not go, that is going to hamper the availability of the application altogether which we definitely do not want right so what we can do is we can go ahead and make use we can create another branch and then that branch will be declared as a default branch for the application for the all the developers so that whenever we are, they are trying to push the code, they will be pushing the code in that developer branch only. So for that, we can go in and define the branch here as settings. So under, first of all, under branches, we can see the list of all branches that we may have. 
so for that we are going to go ahead and click on create branch let's say we want to name the branch as developer branch and we want to create this branch out of the main branch just like we do at in the actual devops now still this is the default branch still this is the default branch if you don't want the users to push the code in this particular branch then we can simply remove this branch as a default branch so what we can do is we can go ahead and navigate to settings and under settings we can scroll down and here we have the default branch set as main so if we don't want this main branch to be default branch we want the developer branch to be the default branch which should be available to the users to any user who is trying to push the application code into this repository so you can choose this developer and then click on save so now developer branch will be declared as a default branch next if you want to restrict the user access or again let's say we let's suppose we want to connect this to our own local repository in order to push the code so we can go ahead and set up any instance that will have the access to git so we are going to create an ec2 instance that will allow us to push the code to this repository so let's see how we can get connected to this as well okay so here we can go ahead and create a directory as demo make directory as demo we can switch to demo so right now we had deployed an ec2 instance and in here we can define the git clone so if we have git already installed so to clone the repository from code commit what we have to do is we have to define the url so we can search for code commit we can select the repository that we have created and to clone the repository we can simply click on clone url clone https so this is going to generate the credentials and this is going to allow us to use these credentials so here for the first time we are going to this is going to ask us for getting the username for that we can go ahead and navigate to the IAM dashboard, which is the identity and access management dashboard for AWS. Click on the users. Let's say here we have the developer one. We can navigate to security credentials and from the SSH key from the SSH keys for the code commit. So here we are going to generate the HTTPS get credentials. So you can delete one because you don't have more than two active credentials up and running. So here we can click on generate credentials. This is going to be the username that we are going to enter. And then this is going to be the password that we are going to enter here. If the credentials are correct, then we will be able to allow the code commit to repository to be, we can say copy cloned here. So you can see here we have this demo repo cloned. And now if you want, we can go ahead and start working on the Git in a initialization. We can simply go ahead and add everything that we want. Suppose here we want to create new files. So we can def simply define as suppose touch alpha dot html and here we can define sudo nano alpha dot html and here we can add anything for example body h1 sample alpha file we can close h1 close body that's it control s control x and then we can use Git add all, then we can use git commit 
all with a message as sample commit. And once this is done, we can use git push origin and that too, either from the main branch or the master branch, which is currently being maintained here. Whatever branch we are currently working with, so that is going to be defined. And then the branch there is going to be used for pushing the code. So as we are done with the topics here, everyone, so let's wrap it up for today. So first of all, a big thank you to you all for joining today's session, everyone, and have a great day ahead.